Hey guys, this is notes number four. You can call it graph analysis, okay? Um, this is where we kind of put uh, everything that we learned in the previous three notes together, all right? It's going to feel weird at first, but again, with practice, you guys will get enough exposure so you'll be able to recognize the patterns, okay? Um, so be patient with this. I did send you guys a link uh, to the other PDF so that you can follow along so you don't have to write out every single question here, okay? But go ahead and write out this FLT here and press play whenever you're ready. So given a graph, okay, this graph is either going to represent F, F prime, or F double prime right the function the derivative or the second derivative you're going to be able to analyze it by interpreting the relationships between f versus f prime versus f double prime okay so here's what i want you guys to do just like in the last lesson okay i'm going to give you a little skeleton i want you to go ahead and write these out here and i want you to fill in the blank without looking at your notes try your best to fill in what you remember and then once you're done you could always go back and check your notes okay but try to do it just straight from memory what do you remember about the relationships between f f prime and f double prime okay pause here press play when you're all done or when you're stuck okay so i know that f is increasing when f prime is positive greater than zero okay similarly I know f is decreasing okay which implies that the derivative is less than zero negative okay the slope the, the slopes of the tangent lines will be negative uh, if f prime changes specifically from positive to negative okay then you know that f has a local or relative max okay again stay away from words like it all right if f prime changes from positive to negative then f has a local maximum uh, similarly if f prime changes from negative to positive now then f has a local minimum okay this right here that's a cool color this right here is your first derivative test okay aka your sign chart all right your first derivative test is basically that all right let's keep going so um, we know that F is concave up when F prime is increasing which also implies that when F double prime is positive make sure you guys are not mixing these up Okay, this has a lot of weight on your AP exam. Being able to analyze graphs where you're looking at F or F prime or F double prime, you want to make sure that you're very well versed by the end of this unit. Okay, similarly, uh, F will be concave down, it'll look like an N shape when F prime is decreasing in value or when the second derivative is negative. Okay. F will have a point of inflection whenever F changes the curvature or concavity or when F prime changes directions or when F double prime changes signs. You guys need to do this pretty much every single day up until that assessment, okay? And even then, revisit this once every two weeks. Okay, because you want to make sure it sticks by the AP exam. All 
right? So, here we go. What I'm going to do is I have this graph right here. And I want you guys to draw it fairly largely, okay? So I would say maybe about five to six lines down, okay? And I want you to sketch it as accurately as you can, okay? And now I want you to label it A, B, C, D, E, and F at those locations. And again, as close as possible, okay? Okay. So, here's what's going to happen. There's a picture here, but I haven't told you guys what this graph represents. Okay? So... I'm going to tell you now, we'll call this part one. I'm going to tell you now that this represents the graph of F. Okay? Let this red graph represent the graph of F. Okay? So, alongside this picture, you guys are going to have this in front of you, okay? So, I'll start over here. So suppose that we have the graph of F, okay? We want to find, in part A, we want to find the intervals where F is increasing and decreasing, all right? We want to find where F is increasing or decreasing. So take a look. I'll show you in the highlight here, okay? F is increasing from the far left all the way up until you get to B and then from E all the way to the far right okay that is when F is increasing okay so what I'm gonna say here is F is increasing on the interval from negative infinity because that's the far left all the way up to whatever B is Okay, union from E to infinity. Okay, so I want you guys to tell me where F is decreasing. Pause here and then press play whenever you're ready. F will decrease, so F is decreasing from B to E. Because if you take a look in the highlight here, The graph of F is decreasing starting at B and all the way to E. All right? Okay. Pretty easy, right? I hope. Part B is going to ask you, find the local extremas. Okay? So you guys can go ahead and try to answer this one here and press play when you're ready. All right? Okay. Here we have actually two local extremas. So here we have a local maximum and a local minimum. All right. So the way you would write that is, let's do at x equals b, f has a local max since... F changes from increasing to decreasing. Okay. Now, in part A, technically you should justify it, but I mean, the justification would be the graph is going up. Right? But we're not going to really dive into that. All right, So here at x equals e, f has a local min since f changes from decreasing to increasing. Okay, This is kind of just to get your feet wet. Okay, uh, What really counts is when we get into the next few parts. All right? 
So this is just to get you guys comfortable in terms of knowing how to write your answers, okay? All right, let's keep going. Part C asks you, find the intervals where F is concave upward and concave downward, okay? So remember, this is the graph of F, all right? The graph of F, okay? Well, how can you tell when a function is concave up or concave down? Since we're given the graph of F, Wherever it looks like a U, that's going to be concave up. And wherever it looks like an end curve, it's going to be concave down. So here we go. We're going to say, actually, you know what? Pause here and guess. And let's see if your answers align with mine, okay? F is concave up on the interval from C to infinity. Starting at C all the way through it looks like a U shape okay now we're not gonna justify that because saying it's a U shape is not really the best formal way of doing it okay so we're just gonna skip that part but also F is concave down from negative infinity all the way up to C because it looks like a N shape Okay. All right, let's keep moving. Part D, find the points of inflection of F. So if you read back at the top, F has a point of inflection whenever concavity changes. Since we're looking at F, we're just looking at where the concavity changes. So at X equals C, F has a point of inflection how do we know that? Since F changes concavity. All right. And lastly, part E, find the zeros of F. Okay. You might have seen this back in integrated math three or even pre-calculus. Okay. But zeros is just another word for roots, another word for solutions or the x-intercepts okay how many do we have here we have three so we'll say at x equals a d and f okay those are your x-intercepts your zeros your roots all right okay so that's just to give you an idea of how we're going to write out our solutions, right? But then it gets a little bit more technical as we move on. So what I want you guys to do now is I want you to go ahead and draw the same graph, okay? And call it part two. Pause here. Press play whenever you have your second graph ready, okay? Make sure that you're drawing separate graphs. Now... What I'm going to tell you is that this graph actually represents f prime of x, the derivative. Okay? This is no longer the regular function. This is the derivative graph. Okay? The graph of the derivative. All right? So, here we're in part two. Now we're going to suppose that the graph represents f prime. Okay, so things change up a little bit. Notice how the questions are very similar, though. Find the intervals where f is increasing. Notice how they give us the graph of f prime, but they're talking about f. So what you guys are doing here is you're constantly switching hats. Okay, you got to speak the same language that they're trying to speak. Okay, so right now you have your f prime hat on. All you speak is F prime, all right? But they're asking us, well, F is increasing and decreasing. Just like when you're learning a language, a second language, you got to translate it first. What do they mean by F is increasing and decreasing? Because currently we have the F prime hat on, so the only language we're speaking is F prime. So they're asking us, well, F is increasing and decreasing. What does that mean in our language? 
Okay, kind of sounds weird at first. All right, what does that mean in our language? So we go back to this here. And I'll highlight it in yellow so that you guys can see. They want to know where F is increasing and decreasing. But again, we don't speak that language. We only speak the F prime language. So we understand that when they say F is increasing, what they really mean is where F prime is positive. And when they say F is decreasing, they really mean where F prime is negative. So we have to translate that, okay? So let's do this. We want to, if we want to know where F is increasing, okay, I'm going to write that out first. F is increasing. Now, you guys know that F will increase when F prime is positive. Okay? So look, this is the F prime graph. Where is F prime positive, right? So I'll give you some examples. Take a look at this green highlight. If I am right here, that derivative value is negative because it is below the x-axis. Same thing here. That also has a negative derivative value, a negative derivative value. Same thing here because all of these points, these green highlights, are below the x-axis, so the derivative values are negative. Okay? So, when you get to points like these, everything above the x-axis, you know that the derivative values are positive. Okay? So here's what we write. We know that f is increasing... on the interval from A to D, but also from F to infinity. Now here's why, okay? We know that F is increasing from A to D and from F to infinity since F prime is positive, AKA above the X axis. Really think about that. Make sure you guys understand how that works, all right? So similarly, we know that f, f, the original function, will decrease from the interval negative infinity to a and from d to f. How do we know that? Since the f prime graph here is negative, a.k.a. below the x-axis. So again, it's weird because it depends on what the graph represents, okay? You got to pretty much translate the language. They give you F prime, but they're talking about F. So you got to understand how to interpret what they're asking for. So when they say F is increasing and decreasing, they really mean where is F prime positive and where is F prime negative, respectively. Okay? Please text me if that didn't click for you guys. All right? So take a look. In part B, they're asking you, find the local extremas of F. Again, they're speaking a language that's different from yours right now. You only speak F prime. They're asking about local extremas of F. Okay, so here we go. What do I know about local extremas? I know that F... has a local max when f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay? And I know that f has a local min when f prime changes from negative to positive here. So, let's take a look. I know that f has a local max when f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay? Where does f prime change from positives to negatives okay pause here when you have an answer press play okay f prime changes from positive to negative 
at x equals d. Okay, hopefully you got that too. And if you didn't, here's how you think about it. Every orange dot that we had here were, were all positive values. And then right after D, everything in green yields negative values. So right at D, that's where the derivative changes from positive to negative. Okay? So we're going to justify that. At X equals D, F has a local max since how do we know that f prime changes from positive to negative okay what i want you guys to do is go ahead and identify your local minimums now okay pause here play when you're done or if you get stuck so here we're going to have local extremas at x equals a, but also x equals f, okay? Since, just kidding, at x equals a and x equals f, we know that little f has a local minimum since f prime changes from negative to positive. I'm running out of space here. Okay? Because if you take a look at this picture here, you had negative values, negative derivative values, and then it switched to positive derivative values. So that is the moment where the derivative changes from negative to positive. And that's the same issue right over here. Negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. So right at F is where you have a local minimum. Okay? Local extremas look very different depending on what graph you guys look at. So for instance, back when the graph represented F, your local extremas were pretty much where F changes directions. Okay? But local extremas look very different with a derivative. Local extremas are actually your zeros here. So again, it's the process of switching hats and switching languages. Okay, that you guys have to get used to. So let's keep going here. Just making some room for our next part. All right, so here we go. So we have uh, part C. Find the intervals where F is concave up and concave down. Okay. Again, they're speaking a language that is different from yours. All right? So let's go back up to see if we can translate it. They want to know where F is concave up and concave down. But the only language that you speak is F prime currently. So when they say F is concave up, what they're really saying is, when is F prime increasing? And when is F prime decreasing? All right? So, we're talking about a direction now. Increasing and decreasing refers to a direction. So, where is F prime increasing and where is F prime decreasing? So, I'll do the first one with you guys. Here we go. We know that F is concave upward somewhere. I'll skip that part. Since f prime is increasing. So f prime is increasing literally from here to here and from here to here because now we're talking about a direction. Okay? So that looks like f is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to b and from e to infinity since f prime is increasing okay go ahead and try out where f is concave down and then press play here f is concave down on the interval from b 
to e. How do we know that? Since f prime is decreasing. Because remember, when f prime is decreasing, f is concave down. All right? I hope you guys understand the importance of this because of how long I'm spending on these problems. Okay? You got to be really thorough and very accurate, okay, when you're focusing on these problems here, all right? So let's keep going. Part D, we want to know, find the points of inflection for F, okay? Again, they're talking about the points of inflection for F, but the only language I'm speaking is F prime. So let's go back. F has a point of inflection, F has a point of inflection when F prime changes directions. Okay? I wouldn't say where F prime changes signs or concavity because I'm not talking about F double prime or F here, all right? F has a point of inflection when F prime changes directions. So F prime changes directions at two locations here at X equals B. And E, F has a point of inflection. How do we know that? Since F prime changes directions. Okay, hopefully you guys are getting the hang of it. But let's keep going. Here's the last one. Let me get rid of these highlights real quick. Okay, find the interval. Now this one... I want you guys to try on your own. I want you to guess, but do it in pencil in case there's a mistake, okay? Find the interval where F is concave up and F is increasing at the same time. Really think about what that's saying, okay? You wanna find the interval where F is concave up and where F is increasing. Pause here, spend as much time as you need, and then press play whenever you're ready. Okay. So there's two things here. When they say F is concave up, that translates to where F prime is increasing. So I'm going to use a yellow highlight here for where F is concave up, a.k.a. where F prime is increasing. Okay, so F prime is increasing at these yellow highlights, okay? But they also say where F is increasing. Now, let's go back. F is increasing when F prime is positive. Okay? So where is F prime positive here? I'll use a green highlight. F prime is positive wherever the graph is above the x-axis. So here and here. All right, so you have yellow highlights, you have a green highlight here. Part E says find the interval where F is concave up and F is increasing at the same time. So if you take a look at my highlights here, where does the yellow and the green highlight overlap? Press play when you're ready. So we know that F is concave up and increasing On the interval from A to B, union F to infinity, because that's where they overlap, from A to B and from F to infinity. They don't overlap anywhere else, all right? But again, where's your justification, right? Since, and then this is where you speak in your own language, how do we know that? Because this is where F prime is increasing, and where F prime is positive. All right. So that was F prime. I encourage you guys to go over these examples as many times as you can. All right. So here we go. Last part. I want you to go ahead and draw the graph again separately. 
we'll call this part three. Okay? But now, I'm going to tell you that this red graph here is actually F double prime, the second derivative. Okay? So we're switching hats now. You guys are now wearing the F double prime hat. Okay? So here we go. So now, we are assuming that the red graph that we see on the right here is F double prime. You're wearing the F double prime hat now. This is the only language that you speak. So keep that in mind. All right? Part A, find the intervals where F is concave upward and concave downward. I want you guys to try this on your own. Okay? Give it a guess, but don't leave it blank. All right? Just attempt it, and then let's see if we match up. Okay? Press play when you're ready. Okay. So, I know that F is concave upwards and downwards. In my language, that means this is where F double prime is positive and negative, respectively. Okay? So, I know that F is concave upward somewhere since F double prime is positive. Okay? So, F double prime is positive wherever F double prime is above the x-axis. So, in this case, here and here. So, I'm going to say from A to D, union f to infinity all right hopefully you guys got that too if you didn't hopefully you understood it if you didn't understand why let me know now f is concave down wherever the second derivative is negative and this is our second derivative graph so wherever it's below the x-axis okay so that's going to be from negative infinity to a and from D to F. Hopefully you guys got that. Okay? Cool. Let's keep going. Okay? Part B. Find the intervals where F prime is increasing and where F prime is decreasing. Go ahead and try that one out there. Press play whenever you are done. Okay? Okay. So, I want to know where F prime is increasing but again that is not my language that I'm speaking right now the only language that I can speak of is F double prime so let's try to translate this F prime is increasing is the same thing as me saying where F double prime is positive and F prime is decreasing where F double prime is negative so now that we've translated that language, right, we know that F prime is increasing somewhere since F double prime is greater than zero. Okay? And I know that F prime is decreasing somewhere since F double prime is less than zero which is the exact same thing that I asked in part A. Okay? If you guys notice here, I'll put it in yellow. They just asked in a very different way. They want you to find out where F is concave upward, which is the same thing as asking where F prime is increasing. Okay? So when you're comfortable with the language and switching back and forth, translating your languages, it'll make a lot of sense. Okay? You just got to know what hat am I wearing? What language am I speaking there? Okay. So again, part B would have the exact same answer as part A. Because really, they didn't ask us for anything different. They just asked it in a different way. Okay. Cool. All right. So find the points of inflection of F. Okay. Go ahead and try that. Press play when you're ready. Okay, finding the points of inflection of F 
when I'm given F double prime, okay, so let's take a look at our languages here. We know that F will have a point of inflection when F double prime changes signs, right? So where does F double prime change signs? Okay, we call those zeros. So notice how the second derivative goes from negative values to positive values. To negative values to positive values okay so we have three points of inflection here F has a point of inflection at X equals a T and F since F double prime changes signs now Granted, you guys have this in front of you, this convenient list of relationships here, okay? You got to pull away from it. You can't rely on this, okay? And again, I'm assuming that we're taking the AP exam in person. So we got to make sure that we don't have this in front of us because we want to make sure that it's retained in our heads, okay? But again, use it, but slowly Pull away from it, all right? Okay, here's the last one for you guys. Part D. Try it on your own. Find the interval where F prime is decreasing and where F is concave downwards. Go ahead and try that and press play whenever you're ready. Okay, so we want to find out where F prime is... decreasing and where F is concave downward okay so let's translate this where F prime is decreasing that's like me saying where F double prime is negative so I'll highlight that where F prime is where F double prime is negative is wherever F double prime is below the x-axis which is pretty much uh, from all those yellow highlights right there okay but now I want to find out where F is concave downwards okay again I got to translate that language F is concave downwards that's the same thing as saying where F double prime is negative but wait that's the exact same thing that I got in the previous one trick question they're asking for the same thing Okay, so we would just say that F prime is decreasing and F is concave downward on the interval from negative infinity to A and from D to F since F double prime is less than zero. Both of those mean the exact same thing. All right. So what I would do, I would probably print out one of these again blank, and I would try to answer these questions, okay? Here's the answer key. It's there for you guys to check your answers, all right? Um, so there you have it, all right? Think about what questions you might have, and then relay them to me. This is only going to get better if you keep practicing, so... Try to do it uh, again, and then maybe try to do it again without your relationships in front of you, okay? The more and more you do this, the better off you're going to be. Again, this probably has the heaviest weight on your AP exam, so you want to practice as much as you can here, all right? If you have any questions, do let me know. Um, thanks. That's it.